And as you know, I'm the host of the Bradley Report. I'm also the president and the urban translator for United in Peace, Inc. Got a very interesting story for you today. We're going to talk about what can be done. And what I feel that I can do to aid and assist in stopping the proliferation of violence. Also, the issues that I'm bringing to you for this show today is with the help and the guidance of the chairman of United Peace, Inc., who is also the producer and the director of this show. None other than my wife, that's Terry Marsh Bradley. And the technical wherewithal could not happen without the support and the guidance of Brother Omari. So, Omari, let's start off, before I get into that, let me say, to God be the glory, I'm about to share with you my story. So, Brother Omari, let's start off with the topic, first topic of the day. The Fox News story that came out about the Republicans want to attack J.B. Prisker because what uh, what they feel he's not doing to help stop the violence within the state of Illinois, the county of Cook, and especially Chicago. I heard the shrill uh, uh, screaming of a woman's voice screaming, he's been shot, he's been shot. A Republican candidate for governor recounts what he heard early this morning while camping out in a vacant lot in the Southside Woodlawn neighborhood. State Senator Darren Bailey claims Governor Pritzker isn't doing enough to reduce the rising tide of shootings and killings here. Our political editor Mike Flannery has more. While spending last night in a tent on a lot where Pastor Corey Brooks hopes to build a new community center, State Senator Darren Bailey says he heard gunshots, the cries of apparent victims, and a series of emergency sirens. Bailey calls Chicago street violence a crisis Governor Pritzker should address every day. For a governor to be standing up daily talking about the real pandemic in Illinois, which is the violence that we're facing here on the streets of Chicago and now spreading all throughout the state. Other Republicans competing to face Pritzker next fall also focus on the more than 4,200 people shot so far this year here, more than 700 shot dead. Candidate Jesse Sullivan, a downstate tech entrepreneur, said this to Fox News Channel over the Thanksgiving weekend. Illinois and this great city of Chicago, it's now become a corrupt war zone. Why? Because our political leaders have failed us. A spokeswoman for Pritzker responded in a written statement, the governor has taken and is taking action to make communities safer. Since he took office, he has focused on this issue particularly with significant increases in funding for violence interruption and prevention programs. These investments passed without support of Republicans who claim to care about these issues but provide no concrete solutions. Asked what he would do to reduce violence here, State Senator Bailey promised to assure grant money actually reaches the needy. Governor Pritzker, I challenge you to come down here and be a part of this. Stop by for an hour. With violence here shaping up as a top issue in the governor's race, the spokeswoman for Pritzker challenged Bailey and other Republican critics to get specific about what they would actually do to reduce it. I'm political editor Mike Flannery. You know, that's what they're saying. Everybody knows it's going to be about the war and the battle between the billionaires, okay? But the fact of the matter is this. I know, and I'm speaking from experience, because I have the experience to help them come to an understanding of what it takes to bring down the violence. I have the experience, and what both of them are lacking those that want to be governor and the governor 
is that they don't have anyone that has more experience than me. And I'm being humble when I say this. By the grace of God, I wouldn't be able to say this without God's mercy, grace, and his hedge of protection. They can spend all the money that they want. They can go get the experts that they want. But they still end up with the same, what can I say? It's that like you keep doing the same thing and live with different results. Is insanity. So one would have to say that they are insane. Don't hate the messenger. Because God blessed him with the wherewithal to help bring down the tide of this violence. And I'm speaking from experience. They go get everybody with the PhDs and the XYZs, but they don't have the experience. The next story. Top mayor advisor on reducing violence quits in what City Hall calls an amicable departure. Bring that story up, Brother Omari. Top mayor advisor on reducing violence quits in what City Hall calls an amicable departure. A mayor spokesman did not respond to a question right there, Omar, about why Norman Kerr resigned. But according to a city hall statement, Mayor Lloyd Lightfoot is incredibly grateful for Kerr for his standfast leadership and commitment to reducing violence in our city both during his time with the city and beyond. Go up a little bit more, Omari. Take the story up. Right there. Right there. Mayor Lori Lightfoot's violence reduction czar has resigned, becoming the mayor's second top advisor on fighting crime to leave after a relatively short time. A city hall spokesman called Norman Lear's departure, which was announced Wednesday, last Wednesday. Amnico, Amnico, I think that's correct word or verbiage. Current, the former director of the anti-violence group, once known as Ceasefire, once known as Ceasefire. Ceasefire come from a program that was known as United in Peace. I know this because I was a part of United in Peace. We took our plan where all the different leaders of the various organizations came together and they formed a bond and dealt with a code to help stop the violence, senseless violence, shootings and killings within the city of Chicago. It was called United in Peace. We went and we met with this guy, Sluskin, who was proposed to be the fiduciary agent. And he turned out, he took our plan, and he made a ceasefire. Know what I'm talking about? Got the experience. Was This gentleman was tapped in 2019 to become the director of violence reduction in the city's office of public safety. Didn't do nothing. That's why he resigned. No experience. Titles, but no experience. He also recently served as Lightfoot's acting deputy mayor for public safety. But it's unclear if he had been officially named deputy director at the time of his resignation, which was October 29th. A mayoral spokesman did not respond to a question about whether or not life would ask for Kerr's resignation. But the mayor is increasingly grateful to Kerr for his steadfast leadership and commitment to reducing violence in our city, both during his time with the city and beyond, according to the city hall statement. The work of the Office of Violence Prevention continues as part of Community Safety Coordination Center. 
the mayoral spokesman said. Norm has continued to be a close partner of the mayor's office since his, is that word, Amdico, Amdico, whatever it is, departure. He's no longer there. And the mayor, Lifer, wishes him all the best as he expands his impact beyond Chicago. Could you take it up a little bit more, Brother Marty? A little bit more. Right there. It was not immediately clear why Kerr left. Mystery. The mayor's spokesman did not respond to questions, and Kerr could not be reached. To explain, before joining life was administration, Kerr spent over a decade working with Cure Violence. Cure Violence was the name that they changed from ceasefire after they realized that Sluskin was getting too much money. He was taking about a fifth off the top for himself. What I mean by that? I'm glad you asked. If the state gave him $5 million for the program, he was taking a million dollars off the top for himself. That's what he was doing. Back to the story at hand. At City Hall, he largely filled the role previously held by Susan Lee who was appointed deputy mayor for public safety in June of 2019, but left the job in October of 2020. Go up a little bit more, Omari. Right there. Lee came from the not-for-profit Safe Chicago Network at Creating Real Economic Destiny, founded by former U.S. Education Secretary Arnie Duncan. And I believe that's Laverne Powell, if I'm not mistaken, the widow of Apple founder Steve Jobs. Great people, great titles. All of them got what one was saying. Resources that's needed, but they don't have the experience. I do. Now imagine if they use the experience that I have professionally, not pimping me, but use the experience that I have professionally with the resources that they have, and we can come a long way to help eradicate this senseless violence. Lee's mission was to sh shift Chicago away from a law enforcement driven solution to gang violence. But city council members complained she failed to answer their questions during the meetings. I'm of the opinion that the city council wasn't comprehending her answers to their questions based off the fact that the question that they may have been asking her, she couldn't answer because she didn't have the experience that I have. And the city council knows this. They know me. The mayor know me. The governor know me. The county board president know me. The community leaders know me. The From Jesse Jesse to Farrakhan, you name them. Because I got the experience. I'm going to show you. At the time of Lee's exit, Lightfoot praised her as an individual member of my senior leadership team who has helped to lead public safety and violence reduction efforts. The problem that they're having now is that violence ain't went down. They keep saying that they got a 90s problem. I and others, I in particular, and I'm being humble when I say this, but I'm tired of the continuing deaths that's happening to the children in the city of Chicago. 
that's happening to the senseless violence, shootings, and killings. I'm not complaining. This is constructive criticism. Because until you change, ma'am, till you change and realize what's happening, Governor, and until you accept what's happening, County Board President, State's Attorney, y'all know me, y'all know what I do. I'm speaking from verifiable facts, works, actions, and I'm going to show you. Back to the story. At the time of Lee's exit, Lightfoot praised her as an invaluable member of her senior leadership team. Kerr's unexplained departure comes as the city's crime problem shows signs of worsening, getting worse. He don't have experience. I do. And while we own that, I'm speaking as a former gang enforcer that was given a responsibility to become an enforcer to help implement the United and Peace and the Code to end senseless violence, shootings, and killings in the city of Chicago. They got a 90s problem. Give it an individual. They can use the wherewithal and the knowledge that he has to address the 90s problem because he addressed the problems in the 90s without the resources. I'm also known as the Urban Translator, and I was just awarded the Humanitarian Award from the Black Chamber, from the Southland Black Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Because I know what to do. And I'm speaking about Public safety, public health, criminal justice reform, fairness and redemption in the name of humanity. Don't get mad at me, because I know what to do. These are the stories. This ain't what Gator is saying. This is what the people talk about in the barbershop, in the bars. When I go out the steps. Brother called me from behind the penitentiary that's been blessed by God to be released so they can come back and be redeemed and become a asset to help stop the violence. Don't get mad at me. This is what I do. By the grace of God, this is what I do. Let's get to the next, the next piece. Uh, Brother Omari. Yes, sir. Start with the discussion is the crime bill the solution? We began to talk about whether indeed America herself appreciated that it was enough of an urgent issue that she's prepared to invest in all of our young people across the board. Let me ask you, Gator, you had a you want to speak to it? Crime bill appears to make sense but it don't make sense. I'm saying that because I'm a part of the element that was once locked away. It's still a part of a major form that they're trying to lock the African-American youth away. We got to understand that the penitentiary is a business and it's about locking us up. No African-American will have a soap contract, a sheet contract, or a polish contract for the floor that they're going to have them brothers polishing. What I'm saying is that everybody asking for funds to be brought. The thing about the funds that the Justice Department is paying for an initiative that's going to do biochemical and genetic testing on the African-American youth. 
I come to find since I've been here, they got 11,000 subjects in Chicago alone that they testing on, Reverend Jackson. Okay? If one of the main solutions that we all got to deal with, let's not, please, let's not make violence a health issue because it's going to bring about experimentation without explanation. Okay? I want to say that. Secondly, I agree with our Shopman and Jesse. I'm glad that you brought everybody to the table. Because the thing that's been working that I know that's working is the truth conferences that's happening in every one of these cities. Okay? I know that we got a track record in Chicago for bringing the violence down and the crime down, and we didn't have no anti-crime bill, and we didn't have no budget. <laughs> but we cared enough to stop the killing among our children, and this is coming from brothers that's locked up in the penitentiaries across the country, okay? Brothers that's locked up for 100 years, Larry Hoover locked for 100 years. Everybody say it was wrong for us trying to get the brother out the penitentiary. We was trying to do it because his time was up. There's mass murders being put back on the streets in this community that ain't being monitored. They go to the board one time. This man been to the board 12 times. They want to keep him there because he decided to tell them to stop killing, tell them to stop being about the drugs, tell them to register the vote, honor the women, and honor the children. Then we have this government saying it's right to free a guy that I read about that's fired for somebody else against our country. So we got to be real. And the crime. Just deal with crime in its totality, regardless of who it is. Whether it's a sitting president or a president who once was sitting. <laughs> okay? Because it's affecting all of us. How can we tell our children that it's wrong to be about crime and get mad at the rappers? This rap cut, damn it feel good to be a gangster. I didn't understand until I saw the video. When they showed why they say it was down to feel a gangster, when they see that Nixon picked somebody to give him a pardon. Mm -hmm. When they see how Bush gave everybody a pardon from the Iran gate or whatever gate it was. <laughs> and when they saw how they used their military mafia to go and move on other countries to either move their dope this way or that way. Well, we got to understand the United States government has been involved in distribution of drugs all through the flake. But until they took Panama, they got into the cultivation end of the drug industry. Okay, let's be real about this, okay, since they all here, because I don't want to go back, I don't want to go back and tell my son, say no to dope, when the rap on the street is, if you're going to sell dope, let it be for national security, because if you get a, a kilo, from our Northern Act crew, you get a pardon. If you get from anybody else, you get 60-30. I'm just telling you what the real thing is. You're speaking the truth. Because, hey, because this is serious. And, hey, Jesse, I want to say this here. Everybody felt like they should have had an invitation. Cool, but this is not a wedding. Okay? Everybody feel that way. We got to... My whole move is this here. One solution for everybody in here. Yeah. If you read somewhere that somebody is trying to talk about any something, get there. That's right. Mm -hmm. Get there. We didn't get locked into, hey, we got to be invited here and got to be invited there. Be invited to a wedding. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> be invited to a funeral. I'm just saying, we got to push for those that want to stop this. I know it works. Mm -hmm. Okay? We find some in Chicago mm -hmm. where the administration don't want us to be for peace. That has a history of destroying those that was for peace. The Black Panther Party wasn't a no gang. Mm -hmm. When the investigation was over and the smoke was cleared, it was the mayor, the state's attorney, and the FBI that murdered them that was feeding people. That's right. Okay? That's the same thing that's affecting us now. The mayor's son, whatever that saying is, the fruit don't fall far from the tree. <laughs> the state's attorney, same lick. They got the FBI, same lick, trying to give everybody this fear factor. 
okay? Since we came together for peace, all the nations across the country, mm -hmm. whether they Crips, Bloods, Gangs Disciples, Black Disciples, mm -hmm. Stones, Cobras, Vice Lords, whatever it is, we have made a decrease in crime yeah. in Chicago. Murder rate went down, and check this out. This summer was so quiet, mm -hmm. Reverend Jackson, they don't even mention a hot summer mm -hmm. in 93. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, what you doing is educating us because it gives us the strength to go back and tell the brothers in the street mm -hmm. that this here is no joke this time. Mm -hmm. yeah, By them seeing it, those that can't see it in the penitentiary, we got mm -hmm. uh, my youth in prison outposts that have the right to take tapes in there and educate them. Mm -hmm to what is happening out here. Mm -hmm. I just feel that we got to stop playing, not saying that we plan here, because this is the first time I ever been to a conference like this here, where everybody is here, where everybody is a controversial person. <laughs> <laughs> of the drugs, what it did really was put the real attention on this anti-crime bill. When you look through the bill, there is no money being spent to stop drugs from coming into the country. They can stop a cigarette from getting in from Cuba. You, you, you see what I'm saying? come around for an election, they get elected with putting the fear factor right. on the people, and we feel the effect. Mm -hmm. When they say in Illinois, Edgar wants to build a penitentiary for $60 million, they, oh yeah, that's after you get through with the sheet contract. <laughs> what I'm saying, and then the same, the same children that wanted to lock up, march with Push and Seabuck and Inner City Youth Foundation and all the other organizations, NAACP, marched around City Hall to make the teachers bite the bullet to, to go back to school. Then my son say, why are they spending $60 million when they could have gave that to the education? 13 years old, man. You get what I'm saying? When they sat there around City Hall and realized that, hey, and I really do got to go to school since I'm marching around City Hall and ain't loitering. Marching around City Hall so I can go to school and then they don't want to let me in school. In this crime bill, it's saying that if they arrest any of these youth and tag them with a tag of being an alleged gang member, That's right. when he get old enough to go to college, he won't be able to get a pay of rent. That's right. Say that, Wallace. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. You know? And I agree with, with, with Congressman and Fumi. Let's go back. We there's a government in the community. Okay? I don't mean to harm so much about Chicago, Illinois, but that's all I really know about. Okay? When you have a congressman like Mel Reynolds pushing NAFTA because Robert Calvin say push NAFTA and then say it's wrong to, to be associated with gang members when he was caught up with uh, Panici and Chicago Heights, the real mob. Let's be real about what's happening. Let's stop playing with this thing here. Okay? Because it's, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm tired of electing people
to office that's not reflecting their constituency out of fear of what somebody else that don't care about our community right. tell them what to do. Right. Okay? They can get on the plane Whoa. and fly around this country with Rosinkowski, you get what I'm saying? Yes. About the step move, and they moved on Hayes because he was late paying back a check. Yes. Teach. You, you see what I'm saying? So I'm glad that we had this forum because when I go back to Chicago mm -hmm. and come back to D.C. for the summit here and, and where else they have a summit, we be able to stand up and say, hey, Jesse brought everybody here for everybody to be accountable for what they're about. Mm -hmm. Now, on that note, mm -hmm. peace out. <laughs>
The crowd rate in Chicago has came down 27% without the help of Mayor Daley, without the help of Eggers. Okay? The murder rate this year compared to last year has came down 10% without their help. They're more fighting us for trying to bring peace about in our community. And that's what frightens me more than anything. When a lie can go around the country that says if you turn your lights out on your car, a gang member will kill you, and then we find out that the lie was sent by a fax from the Chicago FBI office, that's what you got to be afraid of. When you can see today that the same man that arrested Noriega pleads guilty and get a two-year sentence but still in Sam $100,000, that's what you got to be worried about. Okay, when you see that the drugs being brought into our community by the CIA in the 90s, not in the 60s and the 70s, into our community, that's what we got to be worried about. But the change of behavior is for the youth to know because we're going to send a tape back of this conference through the penitentiaries so that they know that there's people here that care if you're going to assume the, the accountability to change your life around for our people. Okay? I don't mean to scream, I just get heated. <laughs> okay? When the brother Larry Hoover wrote a letter from the penitentiary asking all the gang leaders to assume those responsibilities, it meant a lot because no longer can anybody that violate this peace hide in no jail cell, hide in no penitentiary, and it will not be covered by no gang member or nation leader on the streets. We turn them over to the community. We deal with the African American Patrolman League. We deal with the Alphas. We deal with the Calphas and all of them all. We deal with the Masons. We deal with everybody. We deal with the churches. Any church can call Operation Push and say they got a problem on any corner, not just in Chicago, in the state of Illinois. Give us an address and it won't be no problem. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's real. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bragging. I'm just stating the fact. When it was a serial killer running loose in the Chatham area, which is the most influential area within the city of Chicago, Reverend Willie Burrow came to the brothers and sisters in the street to march around City Hall because the mayor didn't think it was important to have the superintendent of police come and address that problem. But they'll send the Secret Service and the CIA and the FBI and the XYZ, everybody to public housing to move on us as a race of, children, of people. And we marched around, we went to City Hall and we got the superintendent and he came, make a long story short, there's no longer a serial killer running loose Amen. in the Chatham area. <laughs> we came together and we got involved and decided to put down the bullets and pick up the ballot, and so we created 21st Century Vote, which is happening now. When Willie Burrow had us march around City Hall, the youth was serious, because they were here trying to chase a killer out of their community. So therefore, they found responsibility and acceptability to wanting to live. Okay? And they were hurt, because as we saw, we shall not be moved. They didn't know the words to the song. I'm not, she tell you, I'm not lying. <laughs> but Reverend Burrow said, come to push that father aside and you will learn it. And they came. When Reverend Jackson asked them to come and put down their guns and make their commitment to not be about drugs, is it turning no guns? When this man in New York, it's a good plan. Turning your guns for toys, then you come to find out he don't turn in his gun. Yeah. <laughs> just, I'm fracking. I'm just fracking with what I... I ain't got no PhD. I got my GD from Stateville, but I did learn how to read. And one thing I learned from Reverend Jackson, they can't say he put nothing up because he put it in their face. I didn't say it. Washington Post said it. <laughs> I said it because they raised me and pushed, man. <laughs> okay? And what we have to give back is what Jesse and Jerry Butler gave me. Right. It's a chance. 
I became Jerry Butler's campaign manager. They said, but Jerry, he's a gangster. And Jerry said, well, he was a distributor of beer at that time. <laughs> so he came back. He gave my chance, made me a campaign manager. I became his administrative assistant. And he ended up being, I'm coming with it now, Bill. He end, I'm saying this to say, really, it's really, I'm saying this to say, and I'm, I'm going to cut it off. The same warden that locked me up and put me in the hole, my job was to go back and check him and investigate him and end up charging him $1,000 a day because he still had women in the penitentiaries in the jailhouse, too, laying on the floor. Just saying about change. If we all just give. If we all just give and make the one we give, give, we can give our way out of this solution instead of trying to build penitentiaries out of this solution. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, therefore. Therefore. <laughs> no, no more therefore. There's no more therefore. And I don't, I'm ready to go to prison now. You, you, you make another long speech like that and I'm, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just walking in there walking to, get, in. to get away from you, Gator. <laughs> I, hope, I, I hope that an awful lot of... Um... In the audience today is Prince Asiel Ben Israel. Would you come up, Nasi?
thank my viewing audience because I got to wrap it up. It was very important that I present prices, this show at this time. Shortages. And the reason that I did it because there's so much happening. What I just shared with you was the dash from the time I was born to the time that I am here now. So that this culture, our culture, would not be counseled. It's dedicated especially to my great grandson, Makai. And with that, I want to say to God be the glory. That's my story. And I purposely focus on finding an end to senseless shootings and killings and violence in the state, the county, and the city especially when it's done to African-Americans by other African-Americans. And with that, I want to say, hey, get your shots, get vaccinated, stay prayed up and covered up. To God be the glory, that's my story. Brother Omari, I want to thank you, man. Appreciate you.